friend. This is the Midi Man coming at you from Walker's Music. <laughs> I sort of like call myself a day to not to throw a curve at anybody, but just to let everybody know that I always say from Walker's Music. So, but never, never I have I think I've ever given you anything or a little keyboard or a little music that I do. Let me close the little door a minute here. Push it up a little bit. Keep outsiders out out of the camera. Um, uh, I just wanted to say that, and, and excuse me for turning my back on the camera, but um, uh, like I said, I just wanted to, everybody knows that uh, old Midi Man he play a little keyboard he, and everything. I know a little bit, not not much. I don't claim to know it all, uh, but what I know, I know. But nevertheless, we back and we. We are up and at them again, and we are we are we are back into pr music production. Uh, matter of fact, it's going a little slow, but nevertheless, it is going. And I want to come today, and I just want to read a couple of scriptures. Now, that's like that little tune I was playing there. That's that's uh, that is one of the songs that uh, I'm writing on now. That could easily be a secular song, but um. Uh, I made it. It's inspirational. It's a uh, matter of fact. It's a, it's a uh, instrumental at this point. I got some words that and some lyrics that I'm thinking about putting with it, and it will be inspirational, of course. But this could easily be, uh, it could easily be a secular tune. People, you know, like I say, I'm not gonna get into a debate about. I mean, how do we know what music sounds like in heaven? I give my hat. I take my hat off if I had one to Bruce Allen that told Jamal Hartwell this very same thing. How do we know what music sounds like in heaven? No one has ever been there and heard and came back and told us what it sounds like. So, you know, like I say, we're not going to get into debate about that, but I just love good music, people. I don't care what type, what genre. I just like good music. And if you keep it clean, that's the only thing. I mean, I mean, if it's clean, I like it. I, it, can, it doesn't have to be inspirational. It can be country. It can be R&B, whatever. Yes, R&B, whatever. As long as it's clean, Music to me is music, and like I said, you can write all the comments you want about, you know, that's that's everybody has a right to their opinion. But when 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 someone leave heaven and tell me what music sounds like in heaven, then that's the type I write. But for now, the only thing I get is my inspiration, which comes from on high. So it must sound like something that what I'm doing. So this is me, the man, and we're gonna get right into something in which I think that will kind of tie into something here. In the 12th chapter of the Romans, and it says, at the very second verse, it says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself, more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God had dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office. In other words, we don't have the same function. In other words, so we being many are one body in Christ, and every one member one of another. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether well, prophecy, let us prophecy and according to the proportion of faith or ministry, let us wait on our ministering, or he that teacheth on teaching, or he that exhorted on exhortation, he that, or he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity, he that ruleth with diligence, he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness, let love be without dissimulation, abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectionate one to one another with brotherly love and honoring and honor preferring one another. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer, distributing to the necessity of saints, given to hospitality. Bless them which persecute you, bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, not but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. 
Recompense to no man evil for evil. Pro provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as it lied in you, live peaceably with all men. And we're going to stop right there. If it be possible, as much as it lied in you, live peaceably with all men. In other words, let God add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his holy word. People, that tells it all what I was just trying to say about the difference in gifts and abilities and whatnot. Let us not think too highly of ourselves that we ought to. In other words, like I said, we want all was darkness. And if God saved me, what what make me think that when he said, got through saving me, that he lost all his power? Now, he can't save you. I'm the last one that got saved. Everybody else, you know, yet got to go through some other, uh, uh, another way. The same thing that he did for me, he'll do for you. No dissimulate, no, no, no respect of persons. So therefore, with our varying gifts, we all differ in what we can do. Don't, we all do not possess the same ability. So whatever level of ability you have, you just use that what God has given you to the best of your ability. And let mine alone. Don't worry about what I'm doing. And I don't really have to worry about what you're doing. But if we all come together with our varying gifts and talents, and we put them all together and, and work 100% toward a common goal, we'll attain. We will achieve. And just as it says here, it's like in what, the way we renew our mind. And we be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You got to think differently. You can't think doubt and unbelief and think you're going to ever do anything great. If you uh, if you want to be healed and, and you doubting the healer, well, you don't, you can't expect to be healed. He said, a double-minded man is unstable in his own way. Let not this man think that he shall receive anything from God. That's the scripture, people. And, you know, we... If the word said, folks, then we can count on it. And I mean, this is not going to change. God's word is forever self. And so we can't change it. So we might as well go on and just bow down to it. You know, but some of us, we we, we, we want to make God's word null and void. And, I, and you can make God's word null and void in your life. But you can't make it null and void in mine. You can do it about your, with your own mouth that you can make his word to none effect in your life by being negative and talking negative and you know, and whatnot, and just, you know, just like the children of Israel did, and I got to hear it on here because time is moving pretty fast. But they just complained, they complained, they were right there at the Jordan River, they were right there at the Promised Land, and they yet had to stay out there in the desert 40 years, 40 years, because they just kept doubting, kept murmuring, kept complaining. And this kept them going around Mount Sinai over and over again, round and round we go, round and round we go. Every time they have a bad attitude, God make them go another lap. And that's the same thing with us today. God hasn't changed. If you want to continue and stay in your problem, just don't. all you got to do is keep complaining. And you'll stay right there in that problem. But until you go on and get the idea that, okay, I'm going to pick up. I'm going to get up. I'm going to dust myself off. Okay, I got knocked down. So big deal. Let's get back up. Let's get up and let's walk again. When, I, when you knock me down, you didn't knock my legs off. I can get back up and stand up and keep walking. But we, we just lay down and just, just wallow in just because we got set back. Everybody gets set back. I mean, that's that part of life. But you don't just lie down because you get knocked down. You get up. But the main thing that kept the children of Israel in the desert, 40 years, right there at the promised land, was called their mouth. They just kept complaining and murmuring, complaining and murmuring. People, you don't have to write. God don't have to write it in the sky for me. Not for me, the man, to see. I can read here and I say, okay, if I want to come out of my problem, change attitude. That's what it's saying here. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. People, you can't renew your mind yet doing the same mess. You got to get away from the same people. People that talk in negative talk, you got to get away from them. Oh, uh, I know when I used to drink liquor, I mean, I could drink it. I couldn't go home and tell the bartender said we ain't got no more. That was just the way I was. So, when I when the Lord trans delivered me from alcohol, I had to stay away from the environment a long time. 
I couldn't just continue to go around the people that I used to deal with. I still love my friends, still love them to this day. But I had to stay away from them until I was renewed in my mind about what? Alcohol. Now, I don't mean I ain't got other issues. I got some issues and you got some too. All of us got some issues that we still got to get be dealt with. But at least that is one that I don't have to deal with anymore. But I had to renew my mind. I had to renew my thinking. And how did I do that? I had to change the company I kept for a while. Now I can go around the old places and it don't bother me. I can go around those same buddies that I used to drink with. Don't bother me no more. Even if they are drinking. It doesn't bother me. Why? Because I've renewed my mind with the word of God. And I know now that I can. I can be around it and don't have to do it. This is what Jesus was saying to people about let your light shine. Letting your light shine don't mean staying away from people that are doing things that you might not think that, it, well, it's not right. Things that we used to do. It don't mean staying away from it. It means that you can be around that environment and yet not sin. That's what Jesus did. I mean, think about it. Don't think too much of yourself because we are not all that hot. I mean, as a matter of fact, we are nothing within ourselves anyway. It's only what Jesus did that makes us something. And it makes us somebody. So it's not you that's doing the work. Whether you don't, you may, may like myself. I may not be drinking now, but it's not because of the fact that it was my strength, but it's his strength that keeping me from the drinking. It's his strength that keeping me from smoking the cigarette that I used to smoke. It's not me. Because if it was left up to me, I'd be drinking and smoking right now. Oh, yes. Right now. Because I don't have any strength for that type of thing. Neither do you. But it's only through the love of God. Jesus Christ that did all this for us, he paid the debt, he paid the penalty, that we might walk freely in, 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 in liberty now. We, are, we were once captive by this stuff, but now we are set free. And that's it. It's by his, his blood, by what his work, not yours, not mine. Submitted man saying peace and goodbye.